Ambon Fest Mbalo Farm Manager Viani Farm. Viani Farm is located at Makueni County along Watemakindu Road. Here at Viani Farm, we are focusing on aquaculture where we raise uh, fingerlings from day one up to one month and supply them to our clients. We have broodstock ponds where we propagate our fish. Uh, for the broodstock ponds, we harvest. In, uh, uh, in tilapia, we harvest the eggs and incubate them uh, in incubating jars where uh, they are in motion. So after like five days, they hatch. After hatching, uh, they swim to holding basins. Then we start feeding at the third day. Then uh, raise them up to three weeks, after which we transfer them to grow outs. In the grow out, they stay for one week. Then uh, they reach the market size of being a fingerling. This is Samtash and I'm still here at a Vienna farm and we are checking out our finger links which will be taken by our brother here, Bonfas, and from the first step of brooding, both tilapia and catfish. Yeah, so he'll be taking us through the farm and I hope you enjoy and get inspired. Again, since Makweni is a semi-harried region, we have innovated recirculating aquaculture systems which we have used locally available materials such as the porous stones and in the porous stones we have added bacteria that is nitrobacter bacteria which helps us to break ammonia to less toxic substance again as the water recycles it is be, it is being filtered by the porous stones hence solid waste, fecal waste, is removed. So the water remains clean for six to 12 months without changing. So a farmer who uh, is low on water can use our technology to raise fish. We are also supporting farmers uh, to implement the aquaculture practices, training them on sustainable aquaculture practices. Again, uh, our fish, we keep them in harbor nets, to, uh, which makes easy for egg collection. That is in tilapia case. So after every 14 days, we go to the broodstock ponds, remove eggs. For uh, tilapia uh, broodstock, uh, incubates eggs in the mouth. So when they are in the mouth, it keeps on rotating for aeration uh, for them to hatch. So we don't wait until the fish spit the eggs into the water. So we manually collect the eggs and incubate them in the jars. This makes us to produce fingerlings all around the year and making sure we sustain our clients. On a different case for catfish, for they don't breed in ponds, we need to propagate, to propagate them artificially. So we induce them with hormones. Uh, after selecting the broodstock, we induce the, the female one with hormone. The hormone helps us to ripen the eggs. Then after the eggs ripen, uh, we strip them into rabaisins and uh, do surgery to the male catfish. We remove the gonads. Then we prick them on top of the uh, eggs of the female fish after which we just uh, gently then incubate them in incubating traps after 24 hours you are very sure that the fry at that stage we call them fries they will hatch after hatching they will swim down through the system and uh, stay at the base of the system for three days. So, but at one month, we, we sell strictly at 10 bob. Uh, the farmer, if the farmer does not want to be doing grading, he books and uh, says, uh, maybe I want them when they are posting fingerlings or juveniles. So we will do the grading so that once we deliver the fingerlings to him or the posting fingerlings, he will not grade anymore. Mm -hmm. 
I'm standing between two broodstock ponds. Both are with tilapia broodstock ponds, uh, fish. So uh, we have installed them with a uh, blue harpanet. Uh, the one which you can see is a blue harpanet. So uh, we have suspended the broodstock fish in the harpanet. Uh, this helps us uh, uh, during harvesting. So uh, when uh, the process of egg removal, we just insert a log across. Then we push the fish at one side so that we can be handling just one by one. Because if we could just drain the water totally, then the fish will start gasping for oxygen. Then they will vomit the eggs yet and we will experience losses. Also, uh, we have covered the ponds with predator nets. This predator net helps uh, in case we have uh, predators uh, which uh, consume fish. So with the predator net, you are very sure that you will not experience predators anymore. We have different types of ponds. As you can see, these are raised fish ponds. This works best for a farmer who does not want to excavate his or her land. Again, we have incorporated it with the recirculating aquaculture system. So the water insect just keeps on rotating and as the water flows in the pond, uh, uh, you can see indication of bamboos. That indicates uh, oxygen is being added into the water. Yeah, but it works yes, yeah. as you just can see. It. Again, as the water flows, it's very clear. Uh, compared to the one in the pond. So uh, as it undergoes the filtration because uh, uh, after the pump, we have a pump which is mm. solar powered and it, uh, it has a capacity of pumping 800 liters per hour. Yeah. So it pumps the water to the first uh, uh, bucket yeah. uh, which is filled with porous stones. Then uh, water, uh, the pipe is dipped uh -huh. up to the downside of the tank. So it raises up just slowly by slowly, mm. being filtered through gravity and flows to the next tank through gravity. Then uh, in the last uh, third tank, uh, there are no porous stones at all. So it's just a reservoir uh, for the clean water. Then after it, it is filled, uh, it flows back to the system. And so just the process continues. Mm, awesome. So what are the main differences between a raised one and this one? Uh, there is no difference, mm. but uh, uh, we saw uh, it good uh, to to start uh, making the rest pond because some farmers uh, could uh, uh, prefer excavation of plants as uh, something which uh, will destroy their farm and all that. So we came up with the innovation of just making the rest one. Wow. So in okay. case a farmer. Uh, once a pond, mm. but initially, uh, and he does not need the excavated one. So it is an alternative. Amazing. And now, in terms of harvesting, because we are in a semi arid area, yes. So, how do you harvest water? Okay. We have a rock catchment mm -hmm. uh, where we have uh, built just wall uh, along. So, uh, all the water which falls at uh, the rock mm -hmm. is directed to a farm pond where we, after being collected, we use it uh, in uh, raising uh, fish, watering of the mango trees, and all that. So it's a reservoir. Again, we have a borehole uh, and a shallow well as well. We yes. also incorporated our pond with aquaponics. And in the aquaponics, we have just raised some spices, like the rosemary. This act as, as a spice, uh, uh, for making meals delicious. So you can incorporate your uh, pond uh, with uh, aquaponic. Uh, in the aquaponic, we have also used the porous stones, which are as water flows because uh, we have a pump inside the pond. So it pumps the water and uh, this is the inlet. Then after it gets into the inlet, it just flows uh, along just the pipe and uh, because when it's coming from the pond, it's contaminated. It has uh, waste that is bio waste, uh, also the fecal waste, uh, maybe food remains. So the waste is trapped in the stones. Then after being trapped into the stones, uh, the plant, like for our case, the rosemary, uses the uh, waste as fertilizer uh, for it to grow. One of the methods we have used to cut costs of feeds. 
we have propagated Azola. In just a small space, you propagate your Azola. It's aquatic plant. It sprouts when uh, well topped up with manure. And we use the chicken manure, uh, goat manure, and cow manure for it to dry. So, if you need to supplement your fish, try Azola. We are in the main chamber of the hatchery where we do brooding of uh, catfish and tilapia fries from day one up to two weeks. Uh, we have used uh, uh, simple things that is locally available materials that is like the porous stones. So these porous stones are the ones which help us in filtration of the water. This is our catfish incubating system one. The system is uh, incorporated with a recirculating aquaculture systems. So this is our supply tank. The supply tank feeds the main pond with water. So as water enters into the collecting basins, it's very clean. So in the collecting basins, we have a pump which has a capacity to pump 800 liters per hour. As you can see, we have also covered the catfish hatching uh, systems because uh, catfish fries are affected by light intensity. So we have to create darkness for them so that we can have 100% survival. This is another uh, unit for incubating till, uh, catfish as well. So the, uh, after fertilization, the catfish eggs are incubating in uh, are incubated in this incubating trough where after 24 hours they will hatch then swim down into the system then after three days they will raise up uh, to start consuming feed on the other side we have tilapia incubating systems as i said after we have uh, the heads of tilapia for they brood them in the mouth we, we come and incubate them in McDonald's jars where they are being rotated because when the eggs of tilapia are brooded in the mouth, they keep on rotating. So the McDonald's jars are just acting as the mouth of the parent broods of fish. Uh, we do this because we are focusing on production of fingerlings from time to time. So if we take the eggs from the broodstock, then it will lay eggs uh, frequently and uh, you will be harvesting eggs from after an interval of 14 days. farmer and you are asking how you can reach us please reach us via our social media platform and we are always available or you can visit Eviani farm we are always open for farm visits and farm training so dear farmers come at Eviani farm and you will learn so amazing things thank you